your greatness, your majesty, your faithfulness, who you are, Lord, oh God, to the world around us. And God, even as we're talking about community as a church, I pray that um, we may live out, oh God, the, what it means to be the body of Christ as a community. That we may, we may be, Lord, oh God, the very body of Christ, oh Lord, where we've been planted. I pray that, Lord, even as we declare that you are worthy of all our praises in this season and forevermore, as we declare that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and that you have never stopped, Lord, being the King of kings and Lord of lords, I pray that, Lord, oh God, our faith will rise up and that we will once again take up our eyes uh, from, from the circumstances around us to you, Lord. Be reminded, be reminded that you're still greater, that there's no other God beside you, Lord, that you are worthy of all praise because you've made a way even where there was no way. That God Almighty, you, you've created us for your own glory, for your pleasure. And that, Lord, oh God, if it wasn't for what Christ did on the cross, we would have no hope. But today we stand in the hope that is in Christ and we know that that he is the king of kings Lord we thank you we bless you we give you praise and glory amen hallelujah you ready to praise him hallelujah thank you Jesus we declare that there's no other God beside you Lord thank you Lord no other God can be called a father. No other God can be called a friend. No other God can be called redeemer. No other God's coming back again. I will love you and how. Them this morning, how we love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. Whoa. We love your name. You are the overpraise. Come on, join me sing. There's no other God, no other God.
church he's the righteous one all his ways are perfect we give him glory to the righteous one he's the righteous one lift up your hands and sing glory we sing glory to the righteous one to the righteous one you are the God we give you glory Lord forever and ever your ways are perfect your ways are higher than ours Lord you are the righteous one Lord we are here to testify oh God that we are living testimonies of your goodness and your ways that are perfect oh God thank you Lord for how faithful and gracious you've been to every one of us especially this year Lord oh God thank you for your mercies that have sustained us Lord and continue to do so and that's why we bring back all the glory to you oh God this morning we bring back to the to you the glory because it is yours Lord thank you Jesus your faith
Jesus, thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise because you have made a way. Come on, lift up your voice and just think back on this year and give God the praise that He is due. Lift up your voice and just say, Lord, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I know you made a way. Oh God, we are standing here only because you have made a way. We are standing here not because we are smarter. Not because we are healthier, not because we are stronger, Lord. It's only because you made a way, Lord. And Father, you continue to do so. We trust you, Lord. Even as we are coming to the closer to the end of this year, we still know that you are a way maker. We know that you are faithful till the very end, Lord. Oh God, you are not defined by the years and the times and seasons. You work outside of that. And so God, we choose to trust in your faithfulness. We choose to join all of in all of creation in testifying that you are God. You are Lord over it all. All praise belongs to you, Lord. All praise belongs to you, Lord. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy of all praise, Lord. We give you glory. We choose to raise our hands in praise to you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. Ye heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
want to take time to just proclaim your faithfulness, Lord. Because you are the God who makes a way where there's no way, Lord. We want to speak your blessing over your people, over your children, Lord, over our families and our nation, Lord. There's a breaking. It's in my favor. And there's a shifting oh, in my direction. Oh, cause there's Regardless, Lord, you're still on the throne. You've never failed and you're not about to fail now. And so, Lord, for everything this year, we give you praise. Because the very breath that we take is yours, Lord. Let's just sing this first verse again. Praise God from whom all blessings. Sing it out. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the victory that is in the cross. And that when we remember that your word says that in this world we'll have trouble, but we must be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. May you open up our eyes, Lord, to see what you are doing even in this season, Lord. To focus on who you are, your greatness. To focus on what you've done and what you're doing in us. Lord, we thank you that we can still proclaim that you are still on the throne, that you are the King of kings forever and ever.
give you praise Lord. in the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt church lift up your voice and say praise Father, I want to thank you because you're God. When all these other things have failed, you are still God. At times, it even goes beyond us because when things are in turmoil and going, you know, when it's difficult, but he still is God. And all we can do is sing hallelujah. And I'm going to ask Maya to come and we just sing hallelujah. 
because we are here, not because of anything we've done. We are here, not because we are smarter, just like she said. We are here, not because there is anything we've given, but just because of God. And what else can we do? Other than say, thank you. Other than say, hallelujah. Other than say, you are God. Other than say, you are Lord. So I want us to just sing that hallelujah and raise it up to the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Church, let us sing all of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we want to say hallelujah. Yes. We raise an hallelujah to you, Lord. Because you deserve it. Because you deserve it. Yes, Lord. Father, we want to say that we are grateful this morning. Father, we are grateful for the gift of life. And above all, we are grateful for the gift of salvation. Father, we are grateful for your son that you sent, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Lord, we are here today, not because we are, but because you are. And it doesn't matter what happens around us. We know you will raise a standard. Father, we know for the righteous, you are the refuge. And there is no other place we can run to other than running to you. So we want to bring all the praise and honor because you deserve it, because you are God, and because you will forever be God. You are God yesterday in our troubles. You are God today when you solve them. And you'll be even God tomorrow when even bigger troubles come. And you'll still be God. And you'll still be God. So we are grateful. Lord, we are thankful. Because you are Lord and King. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Good morning, CLA. All right. Even if you're wearing your face mask, I still want to hear you. Good morning, CLA. Good morning. Yes, there is a group that is answering me from here, but let me face this side. Good morning, CLA. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. I'm grateful to be here. My name is Mark Guamaka. I'm a deacon here at CLA, and I'm a husband to a very beautiful woman. Um, her beautifulness, <laughs> Akimana Rachel, who didn't manage to come here because uh, she's taking care of our child, Mano Imani. But I'm here. I'm here on behalf of the family. And uh, I'm representing. <laughs> I'm representing. First of all, I'm grateful to be back in the house of the Lord. I don't know how many of you um, are happy to be back. I know there is fear. You know, there is fear. But God... And the true love that we get through him casts out fear. And it gives us sound mind. So we're going to be gathering, we're going to be praying, we're going to be praying for um, the pandemic to go in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray for even other churches that have not had a chance to open again, to open in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes? Amen. So that the body of Christ can rise up and pray together. Because it's beautiful to fellowship together. And as I say that, I want to recognize anyone who is here for the very, very first time. 
you're here at CLA for the very, very first time. If you're here in the congregation, please raise your hand, wherever you might be. Yes, yes, yes. You're so, so, so welcome. You're so welcome. Usually we used to say, neighbors, give them a hug, shake their hands. But just know we still love you. We still love you even if we didn't shake your hand. We still love you. And um, if you don't have a home church, choose CLA to be a home church. If you're here because your church is not open, you're still a part of the body of Christ. And when you go back, please take our greetings to your church. We are grateful for you. We're also going to take our tithe and offering right now because we are grateful to the Lord. So I'm going to pray as you get ready and um, we'll use the cord over there. Also, the let's offering slot is over there for anyone who has um, envelope or anything like that. You should put it there. And for anyone who has um, card payments or any electronic payment system, you'll be at the extreme end over there where we have our POS. So please, you can get there. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for everything that you give us. Mm -hmm. Just like we said before, it's not because we deserve it. It's because of your grace that you give us mm -hmm. what we need. And Lord, we're bringing back, not out of abundance, O oh God, but because of worship and how grateful we are. So we're giving back to you as a grateful heart. So Lord, take it, receive it, O oh God, and may you be blessed through our giving. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hello CLA, Pastor Lincoln Saranga here in London. I'm excited to say that um, I have released a book, uh, Seven Keys, Biblical Principles to Unlock Your Destiny. Some of you may have heard me share some of these thoughts in one of my visits to CLA. But you see, over many years now, as I've shared this message, people have asked me, where is the book? Well, here it is. It has been launched and I'm excited to say it is available as an ebook on Amazon.co.uk uh, and .com, which is the US site. Uh, but also, uh, paperback copies are now available uh, in Chigali. You can lay hold of one of these and see what God will say to you as you read. Uh, it's all about understanding that after every sermon has been preached, after every prayer that you have prayed, you still need to understand these principles if you are to get to destination. Destiny does not just happen to you. Now, people typically ask questions like, how do I find my life partner? How do I find my husband or my wife? How do I know which job God has in stock for me? What's the path for my career? What about my ministry? Uh, these areas are guidance issues. And guidance, however random you may think it may be, actually falls under principles 
Now, people may give you 10,000 answers to those questions, but when you distill it all, you will find that life in general falls and operates in about seven principles, a handful of principles. And when you have these under your belt and they're practical, applicable, day-to-day issues, when you focus on these and make sure that you abide by them and walk by them, I have no doubt that you will reach the answers that God has ordained for you from before the world was made. That is what destiny is about. So it's my pleasure to put this in your hand. God bless you. Buy a copy. Also consider making it a Christmas gift to a friend, a relative. And I'm sure their lives will also be blessed. Thank you, friends. God bless you. Enjoy your reading. To register for our services online and to save your spot, click on the link that is provided through our WhatsApp groups. The first thing you will need to do is select the service you want to attend. Once you find that there is room in that service, go ahead and select the number of attendees that you would like to register for. The next step is to read the information about the COVID-19 symptoms. Ensure that you read it carefully and once you've done so, select yes and continue. The next step will involve you putting in your unique information, your complete address, your full names, your email and your contact. Once those are filled in carefully and correctly, the next page will be submitting that information. Once you've submitted that information, it will lead you to another page where you will need to click finish for you to receive a confirmation email. You will immediately receive an email in your inbox and that email will contain a PDF document which is your e-ticket. Make sure you download it and present it at the entrance when you come to church on Sunday. Thank you for following this process and we look forward to fellowshipping with you. God bless you. At 10 a.m., we have a service on claronda.online.church and on YouTube. At 12 p.m., we have a service for the kids on YouTube and the link is provided through the WhatsApp groups. At 2 p.m., we have a service for the youth and the link is also provided through WhatsApp. On Tuesdays, we have online prayer services through our online radio. You can be able to tune in by going to mixlr.com slash CLRwanda at 6 p.m. On Wednesdays, make sure that you connect with your cell members through the various video conferencing apps. Discuss the word of God and pray for one another. On Fridays, the intercessors are able to also meet. And if you want to be part of that, Make sure that you let us know through the WhatsApp groups so that you're added to that platform. For more information, visit claronda.org. Follow us and like us on social media. Thank you for watching. At this point, let me call one of those uh, who will be getting married soon, Jean-Francois and Donata. Please come forward. We're going to be praying for you. And I'll ask uh, Pastor Andrew to pray for them. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Felix and the Donata, we are happy for you. And uh, may I invite the whole church to raise up your hands towards them. Let's, let's pray for them. Let's bless them in the name of the Lord mm. as they get married over the weekend. Mm. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you for Felix and mm. for Donata. Mm. We thank you for the plans that you have for them. Your word says that you have plans for us Mm. that are good, not Mm. for evil, but 
good. And so, Lord, we pray that as your plans unfold, that your name may be glorified. We commit them to you. May you order all their steps, Lord, as they prepare mm. towards their wedding. Mm. And we pray that you'll help them to lay the right kind of foundation for their marriage and for their yeah. family. Lord, Make we pray that you may yeah. provide everything Make that they fun. need so that they, they are not lacking in any way. You are the Lord, their I provider. Okay we pray that you may fill their mm. hearts with such peace and such joy. We come up against every form of anxiety. Mm -hmm. May their trust be in you. May you uh, lead them and guide them in your way. And may you surround them with your presence every step of the way. Mm -hmm. We thank you for them. Thank you for their marriage. Thank you for uh, everything that you have in store for them. We commit them to you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone says, Amen. 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 May God bless you. Um, yeah. Uh, before I go off stage, I would also like us to pray for someone else. Is Gervais here? Gervais is one of our ushers. And um, uh, Gervais is going to be relocating to the USA tomorrow, indefinitely, because he's going to be joining his wife there. And uh, he serves with the ushers team. And... Um, He's been faithful. He's been around this place for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Has served very uh, committedly. And we want to just pray for, for him. If he's here, he may come forward. If he's not, we will pray for him in his absence here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jelve. We commit him to you. Mm -hmm. As he travels tomorrow to the USA to join his wife. Mm -hmm. May your journey mercies be with him. May you help him, O oh Lord, to adopt quickly to a different culture. Mm -hmm. May you lead him and guide him in your ways, O oh Lord. May you fill his heart with peace. Mm -hmm. May he find uh, your grace, O oh Lord. May your favor be upon him. And I pray that even as he joins his wife, that you may bless them together. You may lead them and guide them in your ways, O oh Lord. You may help them to find a new footing in, in that nation. And may you continue to use him in your body. May you give him opportunities, O oh Lord, to continue to serve you and, and uh, do your will. Mm. We just commit him to you, to your love and to your care. We raise him unto you, Lord, thanking you for everything uh, he has done in this assembly, for the way he has faithfully and committedly served uh, this fellowship. We can't thank you enough, oh Lord, for Gervais and what he's been to us. We commit him to you. Be with him every step of the way. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This point in time, I'd like to call upon Pastor Peter, who's going to share the word of God with us. Thank you, Mark. Bless you. Thank you, Mark. Good afternoon, church. Hello. Can you hear me? Good. Uh, it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Are you not excited? Can you give a mighty hand clap to the Lord? Now I encourage you to keep your masks on. I am not uh, the spokesperson, but I am a responsible citizen. So I encourage you to observe the Ministry of Health uh, measures because, like Mark said, we are still uh, fighting COVID-19. But at the same time, I want to thank God that he has kept each one of us. He has preserved us. Uh, we are halfway the 11th month of the year, and uh, we are almost conquering 2020. We are almost... At the end, and uh, you ought to rejoice because God has been with us as a congregation. I know a lot has happened, not as we had planned at the beginning of the year, but the Lord is still on the throne and he is faithful to each one of us. I want to start uh, by praying, by praying for us. If you are here 
and uh, probably you are not feeling well in your body and uh, you've been sick or you have somebody who is sick, I just want to pray and to minister to you uh, uh, by believing with you, believing with you. Our Father and our God, I want to pray right now for someone that is not feeling well this morning, uh, this afternoon rather. I pray that Lord Jesus, your word will be established in their lives. The Bible says that by your stripes we are healed and by your blood we are saved and that you sent forth your word and healed all our diseases. Lord, I am not praying for only these that are here, but I'm praying for those that, Lord God, are represented in this body, in this congregation, that, Lord, your mighty hand will be stretched forth wherever they are and heal them, restore them to good health. We give you praise and glory. And now, Lord, I commit myself in your hand as I share your word with your people. Pray that your Holy Spirit will give me utterance and simplicity. The Lord, uh, your word will be very clear and will not be a moment of soothing or a time of just listening, but we will be people that hear and do the word, the, the word of God. Bless each one of us. I pray that, Lord, we will not walk out of this place the same as we came in. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I am called Peter Hunzingoma, and uh, I serve on a pastoral team as a church life pastor. My main focus is discipleship, and uh, I really want to thank God for quite a good number of people that uh, we have worked with a journey, and uh, I want to believe that uh, that is the way to go. We have to uh, always be deliberate in that area and encourage you if you have not been part of that even as we think of 2021 will you uh, endeavor will you plan to be part of the discipleship journey uh, uh, this afternoon I am going to be uh, wrapping up or co uh, concluding the series that we started off uh, like three Sundays ago this is the first Sunday uh, that our senior pastor introduced to us the series on community, and he said, he talked about the subject of community as a source of encouragement. You need to be part of a community, and particularly, we are also talking about a Christian community. And then uh, Pastor Amos went on to share with us about community as a key uh, uh, to preserving kingdom values, and that was also well explained and last Sunday we had Dr. Benjamin Thomas who talked about uh, community a confounding um, character if I may remember very well. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to be talking about community uh, as a key to authentic relationship. Community as a key to authentic relationships. Now an authentic relationship means valuing the opportunity to grow uh, and learn and value each other. An authentic relationship means valuing the opportunity to grow and learn and value each other. And so community provides a space where we truthfully live out our lives and feel truly loved and accepted. That is where we can grow, that is where we can know and be known. That is where we can celebrate and be uh, celebrated as well. And that is a place where we value each other. That is where we feel accepted. And CLA as a body has initiated or put in place, uh, 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 has initiated that space through small groups or home cells, what we call home cells in our neighborhood, as, as stated in our mission statement as stated in our mission statement, and uh, I said I must talk about our mission statement today, even as I'm talking about uh, community as a key to authentic relationship. Uh, CLA believes in the Bible and the power to transform lives through a living relationship with Jesus Christ. So it starts with Jesus Christ. And uh, we are a cell-based church, committed to building relationships within our community 
to evangelism and to equipping believers to reach out to the whole man with the love of Christ. That is the mandate and that is our mission. But now before I proceed to the next part of my message, I have a few questions for you to reflect upon. And number one, uh, you have to ask yourself this question that am I part of a small group? Am I part of a, a cell group? Now, when I'm talking about a small group, it's not limited to the home cells in our neighborhood, but it can go as far as the marketplace where you work, uh, uh, your workstations. Do you have uh, that kind of uh, a group where you can grow from, where you can learn from each other? And uh, question number two is, uh, uh, am I building relationships? Am I building relationships within my community? In other words, uh, at your workplace, are you not the kind of a person who walks in and out and probably has never, never thought about sharing the love of God uh, with someone that you work with? And uh, probably people do not know uh, that you are actually a believer. And that may be cheating on yourself and as well as cheating on God. And the third question that I want you to reflect upon is that am I doing evangelism? Am I reaching out? to somebody. Now, we believe as a body that it is through these small groups that we realize genuine love, accountability, growth, and transformation. And this afternoon, I'll be emphasizing those main three points. I'll be talking about genuine love, accountability, and transformation. And my main text this afternoon is going to be in the book of Romans, chapter uh, 12 verses 9 uh, to 13. I will read for us from the New King James Version. Uh, let's read together. Uh, Let love be without hypocrisy. Above what is evil, cling to what is good. Verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in, in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. In verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Continuing steadfastly in prayer distributing to the needs of the saints and given to hospitality. And when you read uh, the English Standard Version, verse 9 says, let your love be genuine. I also want to uh, quote the message by Eugene Peterson. He says, love from the center of who you are. Love from the center of who you are. And he says, don't fake it. I don't know what he meant, but I think it's common that uh, we do put on masks when it comes to that value of loving. And then uh, somewhere he says, run for your dear life from evil and hold on for dear life to good. So, what am I saying? I told you my point, number one, is going to be genuine love. Genuine love. Verse 9 says, let your love be genuine. That is in uh, English Standard Version. Or let your love be without hypocrisy. Genuine love is the only love that can put up with the disappointments. That can put up with the heartaches and heartbreaks. It is the only love that can put up with the struggles and the disagreements and the quirks of other people's personalities. It is a maturity love. It's the, uh, the love that will withstand any weakness in a community. That is genuine love. And uh, I want to share with us a small story 
that I landed on as I was doing my study. It's a story uh, that is from the bits and pieces. It's an article called Bits and Pieces that was written in August 22, 1991. A woman who was disappointed, frustrated, and hurt by the husband, and so she went out to seek for counsel uh, from Dr. George W. Crane, the, psycho uh, the psychologist, and confident that she hated her husband and intended to divorce him. I'm going to quote. It says, I want to hurt him all I can. Very determined. She declared family. The counsel responds, well, in that case, I advise you to start showering him with compliments when you have become indispensable to him, when he thinks you love him devotedly, then start the divorce action. That is the way to hurt him. What a smart counselor. He advises her to go and shower that man with much love. And then, some month later, the wife returned to report that all was going well. I imagine she was excited. She had followed all the suggested course, and the counselor responds, good, job well done. That is Dr. Krenz. Now, the time to file for divorce. <laughs> and then, the woman responds, divorce? She said that indignantly, she said, never, I love my husband, dearly. <laughs> what does that mean to you and me? She was hurt, that's true, and many of us get hurt. I want to imagine, uh, it is very rare for you to live with someone and it's all, you know, good, it's all, you know, peaceful. At one point, you can disagree, but that point, it's when your genuine love is being tested. It's when your genuine love is being tested. So if you are having a strife with your spouse or with your friend or a colleague, it's not a time to quit. It's a time to love on them. It's a time to shower them with much love. Now, I'm not saying that you should allow people to abuse your emotions, but what I'm saying is not the time to quit. This is what uh, Peter Eugene says in the message, verses 11 to 13. He says, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the masters. That is verse 11 to 13. And then he says, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. That is Peter Eugene. Pray all the harder. That is verse 12. Pray all the harder. Do not quit. Do not quit, even as you face that. Now, it is in the Christian community that we are supposed to experience true love and uh, also be able to truly love on others. The gospel according to uh, the book of John, chapter 15, verses 12, Jesus commands us to love one another. And this is uh, my commandment, I quote, that you love one another as I have loved you. Here's a question for you and me. Did Jesus love us because we are lovable? Or he loved us because he valued us? Because he valued us. And uh, my second question to you and me is that am I loving on others authentically? Am I loving them genuinely? Am I loving them genuinely? And if I am not doing that, it's our time to pray harder, pray more, pray diligently, to become fervent in spirit and learn from the love that our Lord loved us. Verses 16 of the same chapter to 17 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And then he goes on to say, these things 
I command you that you love one another. It's not an easy job to do. And we cannot do it by our own self. We need the grace of God. Because there are personalities that are complicated. Nevertheless, Christ is sending us to love on them. So if you're not part of a community, you are likely to be a half-baked Christian in this area. Because you'll be quitting or, uh, you know, hip-hopping from one church to another because you feel people are not loving on you. And you are going to avoid actually becoming part of a small group or a home cell because you feel probably people are not uh, loving. Praise the Lord. So, love is non-negotiable value for a believer. It's a non-negotiable value for me and you. Christ wants us to love people regardless. Now, First Peter chapter 4, verses 8 says, Above all, <laughs> above all, love each other deeply. Love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sin. So we don't love others because they are perfect or lovable, but because they are valuable. Because they are valuable. In other words, genuine love is the kind of love that is based on the value of the person that is loved. So God loves us because he values us. He values us. That is why he had to give his only one begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for you and me. Not because we were so good. Some of us are actually the worst characters. But Jesus still loves us. He loves us. So even when someone says your personality is complicated, be reminded that God loves you. And he wants you to love on others. Praise the Lord. It's a very important point even in our authentic relationship. We need to capture that very well. So genuine love is the kind of love that is based on the value of the person that is loved. And I have just said God loves us because he values us. And so we must love one another because of the inherent value each one of us possesses. And which one is that? That is the fact that you and me are created in the image of God. Are created in the image of God. So uh, that should help you to be part of of a small group, and in particular, I emphasize a Christian community. Now, there is this quote by Gift Gugu Mona, a poet writer. She's from South Africa. Uh, uh, she says, love is more beautiful when it is real. Love is more beautiful when it is real. <laughs> and how do we arrive at the genuine love? It is possible, and it is only through an authentic relationship with others because that is where we grow, learn, and value each other, regardless of our diversity, our personalities, and all that. God wants us to grow in that area. Number two uh, is transformation. Transformation. Now, verse 9b says that above what is evil and cling to what is good. The message version says, run for dear life from evil, and hold on for dear life to good. For much as it is a small phrase or a statement, the process, the process involves learning. Transformation does not just come. It comes with time. And so it comes as you get exposed to the Word of God and to the people of God. So if you are avoiding people or isolating yourself from such kind of small groups, you are actually not only cheating on yourself, but cheating on uh, others as well. So we grow or we are transformed as we study the Word of God together and as we are learning together or praying together but also as we serve one another and serve the Lord. And that is what happens. During that process, we are growing. 
we are undergoing a transformation process. Uh, so which other place, which other place can we speak into each other the whole truth based in the Word of God other than the Christian community? As we share our testimonies and as we share challenges, we are encouraged, we are strengthened, and we give hope to each other. Because some people are struggling, but as we share our testimonies, someone is edified. Someone is edified and strengthened. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. Encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So, in this journey, understand that you cannot do it by yourself. You need someone. You need to join hands. I always do that when I am doing discipleship, and I encourage people to get people that are, are going to work with them as they are doing their Bible study and their quiet times. So it's very important. Our attitudes towards life and one another changes for better as we come together in those small groups. And uh, our perspective of life changes and many other things. So we get to learn that it is possible to overcome uh, certain habits. And also as we study the Word of God, we learn of things that God hates and break away from them. And where necessary, we repent and confess them before God. And that way, our lives is being transformed. Now, community is not only a source of authentic relationship with each other, but also a source of authentic relationship with God. As you're doing that, you are honoring God. And as you're doing that, you're building each other. You're encouraging each other. You're uplifting each other. Praise the Lord. And so God is calling us to that place where we can uh, have uh, that kind of uh, communal gathering or fellowship or small groups where we can walk a journey together. Uh, my last point, number three, is accountability. It is in a Christian community that we are supposed to experience genuine accountability uh, in different areas of life. can be in our spiritual walk with the Lord. It can be in our prayer lives. And it can also be in our social lives, any sphere of life. So you can be held accountable or hold each other accountable. And I want to emphasize a statement uh, by Pastor Amos, a statement that he made two Sundays ago. This is what uh, he said. He says, whereas our encounter with Christ is personal, our Christian journey with the Lord is not supposed to be private. Whereas our personal encounter with Christ is private, or personal rather, our Christian journey is not supposed to be private. You and me uh, can uh, attest to this. You can attest to this. We always have different times, different moments where Christ uh, fishes us out to his body. But when it comes to growth, when it comes to growth and transformation, I need you. You need me. I need you to encourage me. I need you to help me. I need you, and you also need me. So what does that mean? It means that uh, uh, you need each other. When it comes to the Bible study, you need each other. When it comes to praying, you need each other. And ultimately, uh, you need someone to hold you accountable in the ways of God. This is what uh, the Bible says in the book of, uh, in the same uh, text, uh, chapter 12, verses 10 to 11. It says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So even when I am a pastor, I need you just like you need me. Because there are moments when I am low. I need someone. There are moments where we are, you know, feel drained. You want to give up. 
but when someone comes alongside and encourages you, you are able to walk. I used to tell uh, the congregation where I had gone to plant a church that before I become a pastor, I am a believer. And that has helped me to maintain my relationship with Christ and with each other, with others. Before you become, you know, a servant of God or what, you are first a believer. And that keeps you in shape. Uh, so, verse 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Very much aware that probably somewhere we would encounter the season that we are going through or we have been going through. <laughs> I'm thinking Paul uh, probably was saying this out of experience as a, a, a servant of God. So joy does not mean the absence of challenges or troubles. No. But amidst those problems, the fellowship of brethren will bring the presence of God in one way or the other. When they come around you, there is that warmth. There is a difference in your life. You cannot uh, remain the same. And ultimately, the joy of the Lord will become evident in your heart, and that brings hope in a hopeless state. That brings hope in a hopeless state. And uh, uh, patience in tribulation. And this you can only find from one another through an authentic relationship. I have been a witness. I have experienced and I have seen uh, brethren go through hard times, but because of that family of believers, they have been able to thrive through. They have been able to navigate through those kind of storms. And by the grace of God, life continues in Christ. You need to be part of a small group. You need to connect to a home cell or a small group in one way or the other. Verse 19 says, contribute to the needs of the other. <laughs> contribute to the needs of uh, each other. And somewhere, uh, when I was looking at this verse, I was reminded of some days that were really hard uh, when the lockdown had just started. It was really tough. It was very bad for some people. But because of this kind of uh, structure that CLA has put in place, we were able to work around it through the zone leaders, the section leaders, and each one of us saw themselves through that season. What an amazing work that cannot be done by just a single believer. We need each other. We need one another. We need one another. And what that calls for is for you to understand that you need to remove the mask and become real, become authentic to one another, be vulnerable to one another, be ready, regardless of, you know, sometimes we are deceived. We are disillusioned by, you know, our, ourselves. Let me say that to avoid, and I don't want to do this, to step on someone's toes. But there are times when you feel that the cell is boring and you don't want to be part of it. It's boring because you're not part of it. If you think it can be a very exciting cell, then go and make it excited. You can do it. Someone needs you, needs your gift, uh, because it is in those small groups that we nurture those gifts that are within us. And so, uh, uh, like our preacher last Sunday says, in a community that is uh, committed to the corrective and are authentic to one another, caring of each other, others' needs will always be possible. It will always be possible. And I have seen it happen. And we did not only take care of our needs here as Christian Life Assembly, but most small groups were able to move out to hospitals and, you know, help those that are uh, hungry. They were able to move around their communities and be able to reach out. And that is what our mission statement says. Reaching out 
to the whole man with the love of Christ. Not only with the gospel, but with that kind of compassionate act such that they are able to see Christ through us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just need to be intentional. We need to be intentional. I want to bring this to a conclusion. And uh, uh, I want to, before I uh, bring it to a closer, I just want to give an opportunity to someone who probably has come to this church and you have never, never had an opportunity to invite Jesus Christ in your life. Whatever I have said may not really matter if you've never gotten to that point of committing your life to Jesus. You need him. You need him. You need him. You need Jesus. And I want to uh, encourage you. Do it. If you can, I know uh, uh, it may not be easy. You know, we used to come and help you, but if you have that boldness, I want to give you opportunity to raise on your feet, and I will pray for you wherever you are. And then I will bring my message to a conclusion. If you've never uh, given your life to Christ, what do I mean you have uh, never invited Jesus in your life? At one point, uh, you've never been able to start that relationship with Christ. Then uh, that would be a little bit hard for you to understand what I'm saying. We can help you in that case. If you're there, you can raise your hand and I will help you before I conclude my message and I pray. If you're not there, uh, may I encourage you to always invite those that are still outside, uh, those who have never known Christ, encourage you to invite them to church. Um, before I pray, I want to conclude my message. Now, the majority of good relationships don't just happen by accident. They don't just happen by accident. There are attitudes that we must own. There are attitudes that we must own and actions that we must take in order to ensure good and authentic relationships. And this will include genuine love, transformation and growth, or willing to learn, or willing to grow, and also accountability, and also accountability. And I want to urge you, if you're here, you need to think about this. In one way or the other, you've not been part of a small group in 2020. Purpose 2021 to find a small group where you can learn, where you can grow, and where you can value somebody, where you can impart uh, those uh, principles that uh, you have benefited in the kingdom of God to someone's life. Shall we pray together? Our dear God and Father, we want to thank you and to bless your name for this beautiful time that we have had in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to be able to come in your house. Thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us a privilege to be called your sons and daughters. I want to pray that, Lord, even as I have spoken to your children concerning uh, uh, authentic relationships, the Lord, it will not just be a message, but we will take it serious. We will own it. We will have it as a challenge that we need each other. We need to grow together. We need to learn together. We need to pray together. And we need to help each other all the time. Because as uh, the time uh, getting closer or approaching, Lord, help us to understand the essence and the importance of being uh, a community that Lord God uh, prays together. I want to declare and pronounce a blessing upon your children. The Lord, even as we uh, get out of this place, may you go ahead of us in every aspect of life. Lord, bless each one of us, Lord, that is represented in this auditorium, and bless their families. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Peter. Before you leave, just a reminder, the books that Pastor Lincoln was talking about are 
at the entrance. So if you want a book, please pass by and pick one. Let's rise up and say the words of grace. And as you do that, I'm going to encourage you from uh, the word uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 58 that says, as what pastors told us, Therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen. Let's say the words of grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Bless you and have a great week.